So the first speaker of the session is Professor Modragon. So can you hear me well? Yeah? OK. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here, George. I'm really, really happy. It was, as a Gise, long overdue. So uh, some of you have already said it, but I'll repeat it for the rest. I met George in 1992, fresh from my PhD in my first postdoc. Uh, which I started with uh, Professor Niles at the TU in Munich. And uh, we met through Mitos Kapetanakis, who was his former student. Um, and we started talking about finite theories. So he told me he was going to introduce me. You know, Peter left immediately after I came for a sabbatical. So I was there on my own, quite free to do anything I wanted. So talking to Mitos, he said he would introduce me to his former supervisor George Supanos, and that's where we started. And uh, ever since I met Supanos, he treated me as a colleague. I was a colleague at the same footing, we were discussing, and that was really nice and refreshing. I was a woman from Mexico 30 years ago, so I was not, as the German says, uh, say, selbstverständlich, yes? Not everybody had that, that vision. Anyway, we started working, and I had been doing work in string theories before compactification. So I had, you know, no idea of a lot of phenomenological stuff. But I found it really interesting, yeah, to start actually being able to produce, uh, to predict, sorry, quark masses. And uh, so we had a prediction for the top mass, as you've heard. And I think uh, Wolfgang Holick explained it really a lot more clearly than Josh and I have ever done. So thank you, Wolfgang. Um, in 1992, and it was first published in 1993, and it's actually the, oops, the first results were presented here, here in Corfu, the first time I came in 1992. That's the first time we presented the top mass. And as a young postdoc, I learned a lot from discussing with people and uh, from that, obviously with George, yeah? And uh, a few years later, in 1995, the top quark was discovered in the range of mass that we had predicted. And uh, you can see George dancing there. George hasn't changed a lot over the years, so this is a very recent picture, but I'm sure that when he heard the news about the top mass, he probably was dancing, <laughs> just with a darker beard and that's all. And uh, let me mention for the young students, you know, like, at that time, the top was expected to be 30 or 60 GV. So we were being quite revolutionary, right? We were being, and as I said, I was, Holger had a, yeah, only Holger had the guts to say that it was uh, uh, heavier. A few other people too, but not very many. And uh, since I has, as I said, I was quite green. I didn't have any, any problem saying it loud and clear. George never has had any problem saying anything loud and clear. So we were quite happy with that. But between 92 and 95, we got quite a bit of criticism because it was too high and it was not possible and it was too high. Yeah. And then uh, when it was discovered, well, it was just right. So that was really nice. And of course, this gave a great boost to our collaboration. And uh, to me, it kept, has kept intrigued over the years. Yeah. So it was really a very good starting point to start looking more both into the theoretical and the phenomenological aspects, and of course, with George. So uh, at that moment, around 96 or in 96, I came back to Mexico. And then we started, a, as you know, since then, a long standing collaboration, where we would you know, George is not always in Athens, or very said, <laughs> it was very rarely in Athens, as far as I know. So we would meet wherever we could, which very often was in Mexico. And sometimes like here, it was in Munich. Around 2003, this is me, these are my children. When they were small with George, 
this is my husband. And we started meeting every time we had an opportunity. Uh, Josh would invite me sometimes to the Max Planck with somebody, or we would meet in, in Heidelberg in Germany, or in a conference, or we could we'd come in to Mexico, and then we start, you know, keeping our collaboration alive. So uh, we started to looking more at our nice models and predictions and theories. Uh, and we first, we have the first Higgs mass prediction, which is like an range or a, a range of uh, masses for the Higgs mass around 2008, a bit before, around 2003, that's where we started working with it. And uh, then at around that time, we involved through George, then Heinemeyer in the process. And as Wolfgang was saying, then came with a, a lot of. Uh, very powerful tools in the form of fine kicks, yes? So we could start doing a proper rigorous phenomenology because we both had a more theoretical background. So with the addition of Sven, we started a very uh, active and fruitful collaboration. And uh, well, as you know, we, we had this prediction for the Higgs mass, which uh, we refreshed in 2012 and 2013 when the, when the Higgs was actually discovered. And again, Josh was probably like that. Yeah, I was like that too, but I don't have a picture of myself down here. <laughs> um, oops. Doesn't move anymore. Could be. You have pictures in all of them. So it's the third one. I think it's the next one, that one. Okay, so we continued working. And as I said, George used to come to Mexico very often where he became uh, very friendly with my other best collaborators. So those are my two best collaborators, my dad and George, uh, because besides the sh a love for physics, they shared a love uh, for red meat and <laughs> wine. So my father, we, we always took take George for a really, really nice meal at lunchtime. So here they are, but this is in Valencia, uh, in one of our multiple meetings in between, you know. Uh, so we had an intense collaboration. Here it is again, George, my dad, and another collaborator, Catalina Espinosa. And here is George with Cecilia Yalsko. And there are some more pictures of that, uh, of that trip. But unfortunately, I couldn't find all the pictures I have. But there are many like that where George and I would try to continue our collaboration. Uh, and here, these were not so difficult times because both in Greece and in Mexico, we still had a bit more funding. But lately, it has become a lot more challenging for both of us. So uh, besides the really fruitful and nice collaboration with George, you know, we have over 20 papers together or more. Uh, I have to say that the first, as I said, my first uh, visit, I, my first visit to Corfu, I've been here about ten times. I think uh, that's where I presented our first results. Uh, there you have some nice pictures of Liston and some of the views. Uh, we started with this school. You've heard about the Zupons, where well, apparently there's a stock market trading in Zupons. Yes, like you could trade Zupons and come and give and stuff. I never sold any but uh, I never was offered any to sell, but it was, it was very useful to have supons at that time. It was like a bit of an itinerant summer uh, institute because sometimes you've seen the pictures, we were at the municipal theater, some other times we were uh, at the fortress. Uh, the very first time I presented, there was an ongoing strike. So one day there was no electricity, but we somehow we still managed to do all our presentations. And eventually, we got this beautiful setting uh, with this conference center, thanks to George. 
And there, I mean, what the pattern really showed is somebody is going to turn the, the pattern on you, something like that is possible to be a conference center that's going to be Josh, yes? So I'm looking forward to when they finish these things and we can come here for an extended period of time and sit there and continue our collaborators. And the, this is thanks, as I said to Josh, because he managed to uh, organize a very, in a very beautiful setting, very pleasant place, uh, an intellectually stimulating atmosphere, which is also a lot of fun. Uh, so you see the fun and the intellectually atmos uh, stimulating atmosphere is provided by the same person, which is really good. So you have very good conversations about physics, about politics, about everything you like during the day, during the you know maths, during the day, and then at night you can go and have a really fun time with a at Egli or at Tripas or here. So here, you know, and then they told me I could uh, say something funny or something I remember about George. Well, the only thing I can think about is a lot of fun to work with him, besides being uh, fruitful and, and so on, it's a lot of fun. But I remember once he was in Mexico and I had to sing the praises of Ifigenia here, which you know is behind George doing all this organization. And uh, he was in Mexico, it must have been like seven in the evening, we were working. And then he said, I'm going to phone Ifigenia right now because I, I need something. I said, George is uh, two in the morning in Greece or three. No, of course it's not, it's not the song. And uh, he phoned Ifigenia and of course it was two in the morning here. And through the phone, I can hear Ifigenia laughing at George. Yes. Then he hung up like, it appears you were right, Miriam. It's two in the morning in Greece. But well, anyway, we had a great time. And uh, here are some pictures. This again in Munich. Here I am behind George. Yeah, the picture was taken by my husband. Here we are in Egli 10 years ago. This is with my parents. This is Ritza, his wife, who is the most pleasant, beautiful, nice person. Here's with my father, the Kalinowskis, and he is in Tripas last year. And I must say that uh, George has been with me through thick and thin. So we had, I spoke about very nice things we lived together, but him and Ritza have supported me through very, very difficult times in my life, recently and way before. And they were always they get George giving me support, Ritza too, and I'm really grateful for them to that. And uh, so for us, George and Ritza are not only good friends, they're part of the family. For me, George and Ritza are my family too. So George, in Mexico, the people send you also greetings, best wishes, your family in Mexico, your Mexican friends, send you all the best. Uh, so here is George. George, congratulations. Many people have told you that. As I told you just before, in Mexico, we have the same when you have a festivity and starts pouring rain is good luck. So good luck for the next 30 years, yeah? Uh, I wish you all the best. We wish you all the best. Uh, good health, a lot of productivity, that you have a good health and good company. And uh, thank you very much, George. I really enjoyed it. Thanks. Thank you very much. And we can proceed with Mr. Jose Martinelli. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, is it really difficult now to add something original? Because uh, many people have spoken about the important scientific achievement by George, uh, not to speak about his uh, organization and uh, creation of this uh, corpus. Uh, seminars at school, series of several schools, the determination by which he could uh, pursue the continuation of this, in spite of all the practical difficulties, 
and uh, uh, so I try to find to find something. Uh, uh, well, let me add also the political involvement in very important questions that regards all of us, like the war in Iraq, for example. So I try to find something uh, original. So I say maybe I can say something negative about him. <laughs> Uh, but this is also not easy, but I found something. And, uh, and the reason is I'm very jealous that he has so, so much hair, contrary to me. And so in Corfu, I found a solution to this problem. You can show. This uh, <laughs> is uh, taken in Corfu, is a hat with the hair, so I can compete with you. <laughs> so, uh, it's me, it's me. Uh, in 2010, here in Corfu, <laughs> really in Corfu. Okay, and uh, so this is the only picture I have. Uh, so I tried to find something else apart also from uh, food and wine, because we, I believe we share this passion. Uh, even a poem uh, in English was, the, was uh, they, they, they told you this morning. So even that is, uh, so I say that since I uh, studied the uh, ancient Greek when I was at school, because I made the classical studies, I decided to write a poem in Greek. Uh, well, I tried, but uh, after 50 years, I forgot uh, almost, apart from the letters, almost everything. So I found uh, uh, a, a poem of an Italian, uh, I mean, uh, Rodari, about the friendship, and I, I read the first in Italian, and then I try to translate in English. The poem is long, but I will read only the beginning. Dice un proverbio dei tempi andati, meglio soli che male accompagnati. Io ne so uno più bello assai, in compagnia lontano vai. The translation is, says a proverb of time, Times have gone by, better alone than badly accompanied. I know a much better and nicer one. You go far in company. And I would like to add in company of George Dupanos. So I believe that uh, uh, besides uh, the achievement in physics, the Kurfu school, and all the rest that you gave us is the atmosphere, as was also remarked by Belen, the sense of belonging to a community that shares values, friendship, and human humanity. So, besides the Zupons, I am a member of the Zupanos Fans Club, and I hope that I will be able you to beat uh, Zikiki by far, by dancing, uh, I don't care whether with uh, women or men, for another 50 years. Thank you for all. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, okay, but the signature was by Zupanos, <laughs> so they are Zupons. <laughs> ah, sorry, <laughs> the validity was <laughs> guaranteed by Zupanos. <laughs> So the next speaker is Professor King. Okay, this is this is very much an impromptu uh, talk, uh, uh, Jan. I asked me if I wanted to say something today, and I, I didn't want to miss this opportunity to ex express my thanks 
So this will be very short, but from the heart. Uh, I actually first encountered George when he visited Southampton for a seminar around 1990. I can't remember the exact date, but I do remember he was talking on dimensional reduction over co-sit spaces. And actually, this was a topic of great interest to the group leader, Ken Barnes. So uh, George probably knows Ken, Ken very well. Yeah. And uh, even at that time, I, it wasn't my area of expertise by any means, but I was very impressed by his mastery of all aspects of this. And it seemed like a very, very in, uh, interesting topic. More recently, I've enjoyed, enjoyed uh, interacting with George here at the Corfu Institutes, many institutes that I've been for, fortunate enough to attend uh, frequently. And G George has always been very friendly, welcoming host, not only to me, but also to my wife, Margaret, who's accompanied me several times. So I thank him very much for that. Uh, having recently been involved in organizing the SUSI conference in Southampton, I can fully appreciate the amount of work involved in organizing just, just a one week conference. So uh, to organize a conference which lasts for many, many weeks uh, each year for 40 years is an actual monumental achievement, which I can only marvel at. So that's really an incredible achievement. And I want to emphasize, like many other speakers, these have been remarkably successful institutes, both scientifically. Uh, I, for, my, for myself, I, I've generated ideas here by talking to people which have led to papers which would not have happened without this institute. And I'm sure many people uh, have had exactly the same experience. So the, the scientific importance cannot be uh, over, overstated. But also socially, as many people have said, including numerous speakers, dinners, boat trips, and Greek nights. And here's uh, some pictures from last night. This is, this is George um, uh, at, at the Greek dinner last night, uh, saying a few words. And uh, this is George in action uh, afterwards. So uh, just simply thank you from the heart, George. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So the next speaker is uh, Professor Pasalovic. Okay, so it seems there is a competition who met George the earliest. In, I think I'm quite good in this uh, competition because we met for the first time in 1980 at the Scottish University Summer School of Physics, which was organized in St. Andrews. And I must say, I know George for a long time, but I didn't know that he was such a strong uh, peace fighter. I don't know, George, if you remember, this school was at the same time NATO Advanced Study Institute. And many participants crossed NATO uh, from the badges and wear hippie uh, t-shirts. Uh, for me, this was, on the contrary, the blessing, because due to this NATO support, I was able to participate, coming as a, a PhD student from Poland, that it was impossible to get financing without such a support. And this was quite an interesting school because the lectures were Sheldon Glashow, Gerald Hoft, John Ellis, uh, Graham Ross, and others. And if you look at the list of lectures, you will recognize that most of these talks were really on uh, ground unification, the beginning of, of looking for a unified theory, which I think, this is my hypothesis, inspired George into his, in his later research. And um, I think also the school was, a, was, was maybe a trigger for Corfu later. Uh, we met also with George later for one year at CERN, and then he visited us in, in Poland a couple of times. 
Some of you may know that uh, Krakow Physics Community is organizing Krakow School of Theoretical, Theoretical Physics since uh, 1961. So in two weeks from now, we will have the 63rd Krakow School. And George participated to the best of my knowledge uh, twice. More? Uh, okay, so I remember 87. Uh, and it, during the school 87, we wanted to solve the problem you mentioned concerning hair, because we have undertaken a big task to cut his hair at the beer party, which was unsuccessful. Nevertheless, he came next time in 87, in, sorry, 90, around 97, uh, and then he uh, published in the proceedings the paper on the unification of of Yukawa couplings, which is now quoted about 60 times. George was also present spiritually at the school because many of his collaborators, um, including Professor Thiessen, who was uh, a previous speaker, uh, were talking about the common work. Now, more recently, George is frequently visiting Poland on various occasions. He was in Krakow at least twice, but we missed each other. And since I'm here, I'm getting emails from my colleagues and your colleagues uh, to convey best wishes to you from our community, from the Institute of Nuclear Physics and Jagiellonian University. So George, please have enough power and strength to continue and expand the school and continue your fantastic physics uh, program. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And the next speaker is Professor Beliaev. Thank you very much. Well, uh, this is very spontaneous because when Jan asked me, well, if you would like to say, uh, I just like to use this opportunity because it's quite unique event. So, but I'm actually uh, came first time to the workshop at Corfu only in 2000, uh, 2018. So I'm the youngest participant here. And actually it was my first visit to Greece. So the, I was impressed I, when I, when I, after just digested what happening, I just realized that this is the, best workshop I've ever been. And it's not surprising why, because so unique events here. So the, well, the culture events, well, the, the dinner, speaker, uh, Greek night, dancing, I was just impressed. Because, uh, of course, boat trip, I like snorkeling. Snorkeling is my kind of favorite thing. But actually, then I realized that something going on here very specially in and what's the reason of course the reason is george because uh he's a attractor of all this kind of special event but what i wanted to say it just it's not only about this workshop well the workshop has actually kind of reminds me connection the connection to something well what which started with fundamental science so fundamental science if you think about like thousand years ago started in Greece, right? So like philosophers was thinking about the four fundamental like ingredients. Well, it was philosophy, it was not physics because well, physics without test is just remains philosophy, but there was also Greek mathematicians and all together thousand years ago, it was like a heart of the of the science. And now I kind of see that well, it's continuing and it's well, and the workshop is one of the really important event for fundamental science, making connection to the past when it started. So I'm very impressed and thanks George. And just in another thing I just want to say that uh, Corfu is also a special thing for me because my one of my ancestors actually did a special thing for Corfu, but this is a separate story. Uh, so this is a special place, but of course the special person is here who made this uh, place special. What's important is that I believe that in the future, there's a great future because with your force, uh, there will be a great force, there will be great 
future because you're attraction, uh, attracting so many people, which we create a lot of things. Well, I don't know how many countries, but too many, a lot, but that, that's, that's how it should be done. Thanks a lot, George. That was great. Much. And uh, we will proceed with Professor Lalak. Uh, so, hello again. Uh, I have no slides. However, I got inspired by my senior colleague from the audience to uh, to take the scene again uh, to uh, express the gratitude of the whole team of the Warsaw University High Energy Theoretical uh, Department. Uh, the gratitude to George Zupanos, our great friend, and uh, actually uh, the person who helped us for many years to uh, school our best uh, students, our PhD students here uh, in this uh, institute created by him and uh, run by him. As a person coming from the country where the spendings on higher education were never excessive, similar, similarly, I guess, to the situation here, we really appreciate the time and effort which had to be put into creation of the center and actually the amount of energy, huge amount of energy needed to successfully run the place. Uh, thank you very much, George, for all those, for all those efforts. I, uh, well, one more sentence, if you, if you allow me. <laughs> from, from, the, from the slides, from all the stocks, uh, you know, one might get the uh, impression that uh, the academic life of uh, George was concentrated at CERN and in Munich. And to some extent, that's correct, because first time I met George was actually in Munich, in Peter Niles's group. And uh, I met also the first uh, pupils of George, I mean, his uh, students, uh, at that time, young postdocs, uh, Kapetanakis, Dimitrios Kapetanakis and Dimitrios Metaliotakis. I mean, great people, great colleagues, great friends, and uh, very fine physicists. Uh, I have to say that myself, I didn't have a privilege to write a common paper with George. However, uh, we share something, namely human resources. I mean, I am at my PhD students and postdocs, there were two people uh, coming from George's group. And actually, this is perhaps something which should be stressed that uh, George was always recommending to us his best students, best postdocs. And actually, those were always great people and great friends and great colleagues. So these two people whom, whose uh, names I can, I should mention right now. So my, my doctoral student, uh, Yanis Dalianis, of whom I have fond memories ever since, and I believe he's still in physics somewhere in Greece. <laughs> and uh, pretty recently, uh, uh, another, another student of uh, George has finished his tenure as a postdoc at the University of Warsaw, George uh, Manolakos. And that was, it was pleasure to collaborate with those people. And actually, I'm, I have to tell you, they are very much like, uh, like their boss, like their teacher. So they are great, friendly human creatures. I mean, and in addition, absolutely great physicists. So it was privileged to work, to work with them. George, uh, please accept congratulations on all your lifetime achievements and uh, accept also best wishes for the future. Thank you.
So now we will proceed to something different because there were some people that wanted to be here and they had arranged to be here, but at the last minute something happened and they could not join us. So they have asked us, they have sent us some texts and they wanted to be right here. So Ki will read them. Okay, so then this is a message by Ahmed Ali, who says, I'm really sorry to send my regrets so late for not being able uh, to attend the George Fest. I had firmly planned to attend it long ago, but events related to my family crossed my intentions. What remains is to wish George a very long and active retirement life. Hope to meet him in Heidelberg, where he was planning to come later. Liuba joins me in sending our warmest greetings. Cheers, Ahmed. <laughs> dear George, dear colleagues, this is from Luis Alvarez Gomez. Yes. Um, I apologize for not being able to participate in person online, but I would like to send a few words to George to honor him in this important time in his life. Last time we met in person was in Paris in the occasion of the memorial meeting for our dear friend Costas Kunas, who left us two days before becomes 70. Uh, we have been friends for a very long time, and we have always been impressed and amazed by his energy, his enthusiasm, his commitment to physics, and to helping the community. It's amazing that he still enjoys an enviable energy to continue supporting, supporting important initiatives and projects in Greece and in Europe. George has an eclectic knowledge of modern physics and has an extensive set of contributions in beyond the standard model physics, in particular in supersymmetric theories, finite series unification, uh, string series, extra dimensions, non-commutative geometry and gravity, etc. But he has also been interested in standard model and collider physics, cosmology, uh, and he has a contagious enthusiasm in the search for answers to the many riddles contained in the standard models of particle physics and cosmology. Apart from research, George is an excellent citizen of our community. He, has, he led the, the creation of the Corfu Summer Institute on Elementary Particle Physics and Gravity. This is a remarkable achievement and it has become a major landmark meetings in our field, along with Leuzouche, Carges, and several others, Leuzouche. He has helped legions of young people in Greece and in Europe. He does care sincerely about justice and fairness, and he has the right stuff to create productive atmospheres wherever he goes. It is a privilege to be his friend, and I want to congratulate him in this change of decade. He has been, uh, he has, and is living an exemplary life. And I wish him the best for a long, healthy, and peaceful future. All the best, Luis. Pepe, Pepe Berdabel. Dear George, as I told you when we met at CERN in July, I am unable to attend the Corfu workshop and your fest in these days. I'm sorry for this. With this message, please receive my warmest congratulations on the occasion of this scientific festivity. Your legacy on physics, training of students, and the organization of the Corfu workshops is impressive. And your achievements are the basis for my wishes that you enjoy the fest and the atmosphere around it. With my best personal regards, Pepe. Stefan Pokorski. Uh, dear George, I was planning to participate online in your, in your fest and to say a few words about many years of our friendship. But unfortunately and suddenly, some people here need my urgent help tomorrow and I will not be able to join you. I regret very much. I hope you'll enjoy your day. I also hope to see you soon. Be with best wishes, Stefan. That's 